Analytical geometry. Use coordinates and algebra. What is analytical geometry? Well, the geometry problem is solved using algebra. In order to use algebra, we use coordinate. So geometry is uh, based on coordinate. All the geometry problem is answered by coordinate system. That's analytical geometry. And that's why conic sections, the geometry and algebra 2, are kind of overlapping. They talk about the same subject, but they often need analytical geometry to solve the various problem. Typical problem here is uh, dielectrics line. What is dielectric line? Suppose you have x, y coordinate and parabolic function here. There is such a line between parabolic function and y coordinate. Uh, if parabolic is like that, there will be line between x and parabolic line. That distance from focus point to parabolic line is same as distance from parabolic line to uh, dielectrics line. So this dielectric line is a line. We can say the distance from that point, this x, y coordinate, is always same as the distance to the center point, the center's uh, focus point. So how do we find out? Well. Distance from the focus point is focus point is C. C is C zero in this case. So x minus C square plus y square is going to be the distance, right? And the dielectric line is a straight line. The distance is always x minus d. So x minus d square. The curve that satisfies the distance condition will be parabolic function. So if you set this condition, then it's going to be this equation. So x equals a y square plus b. And here, c plus d over 2 is uh, B and A is uh, 1 over 2 C minus D. Okay? So when the focus point and the uh, uh, dialectic line position is given, then you can determine the parabolic function using this equation. Coefficient a and b can be calculated by this formula. Now, if you orient parabolic function this way, then of course it's going to be a x square plus b. Right? Okay. So this coordinate help to find out the relationship between parabolic uh, functions co coefficient and the position of focus point and dielectrics line. You got it? Okay. Next one. There are two circles overlapping. The radius of the circle is 5 and 10 respectively. The center is distance at 12. Okay. So this center's origin, x and y, and 12. Okay. What is this position that crossing? So circle 1 
and the circle to substitute the y in b and a we get this so y equals plus minus 4.94 there are two roots right okay so once you know the y you plug that in to this guy then you can get x2 uh, if you feel it's going too fast just stop the video and go step by step okay all the steps are written here in red ellipse the we have ellipse so we try to prove that if forcey point as a square equals b square b is this one right and a is this one a square equals b square plus c square c square is this one this is c zero this is a zero and this is zero b coordinate okay the sum of distance d1 d2 is constant to a okay we prove this one uh, distance d1 and d2 when they are positive means the d1 square is this d2 square is this right when substituting y square equals b square minus b square over a square x square this is the uh, ellipse equation then it's become only x and simplify to be this so d1 equals a square cx over a and uh, d2 we can calculate the same way d2 becomes a square plus cx over a so if you add them together and put the condition this condition then a1 plus uh, d1 plus d2 become 2a okay again if I'm going to fast stop the video and examine each step here in this red ink the um, I'm going fast because the video keep running and uh, I don't want to spend too much time on very details but you have to you have to do it by yourself just follow this you can stop the video and this is a proof of this uh, famous relationship between distance d1 d2 the sum of the distance is the same okay conic function hyperbola hyperbola slightly different a equals b uh, a square plus b square equals c square setting focus point defined as this the difference between d1 d2 is constant okay so in this case d d1 minus d2 will be 2a okay so the which is this area d1 is larger than d2 and d2 minus d1 will be 2a when d2 get larger d2 is larger than d1 okay so d1 minus d2 d1 is larger so this is wrong i make a correction right now okay just follow this it's same as the ellipse case it's just manipulating equations it's good great things about analytic geometry is okay geometry we used to use various technique like 
adding extra lines or proving that two triangles are congruent or tri triangle is isosceles triangle or right triangle kind of things but analytic geometry you use algebra 2 because everything is on the coordinate and the coordinate give you the tool to prove something which you cannot do using those adding lines and you know the this, this is more like uh, it can handle the curved line like a conic because uh, geometry is method is limited to triangles and circles and stuff when it's come to the curve like conic uh, function then it's get pretty difficult to prove anything so you need analytic geometry now find the focus point and dielectric line position okay so we we need to bring back this this equation okay and in this case this one if you bring back this one the a and the b is given so you calculate c and d then you can follow this how this problem is solved because function is given so a and b are given so discover c and d okay so again you can stop the video and take the paper and the pencil and try it out okay now this one the ellipse we will rotate the coordinate by eliminating x y how we eliminate we have to rotate the coordinate right so suppose you have this point and this is x right but this is x capital x this is small x so if you drop this down so x is actually x cos theta and minus sine theta y right this guy is x and y and this is y right In the same way y equals x sine theta plus cos y okay so that's why this matrix is created and this matrix is a rotation matrix okay rotation makes matrix this guy can rotate the coordinate okay into the new coordinate <coughs> you enter that and the set um, this co coefficient zero right then you can eliminate so tilted ellipses ellipse and and hyperbola function can be uh, simplified to be this form and this ellipse hyperbola is just negative here okay so this is how you rotate the the coordinate to simplify 
the conic function. Uh, next challenge is center of sphere is located here in the 3D coordinate and that's gonna hit the floor. Floor is X and Y. The, you slice this by this floor plane which is this what kind of circle will it be? So we set that Z equals zero for this uh, sphere 3D equation, right? Then simplify, then you get this radius 15.2 equation. This two is square, okay? I just make a correction here. Okay, so the draw the conic function. X Y is here, so it's tilted. Okay, so what we do is how much is tilt is symmetric kind of so probably it's tilted 45 degree so when theta is 45 degree cos is going to be square root of 2 sine will be square root of 2 so you see this equation here we adapt a new coordinate u and v by rotating coordinate okay then you get this this is the ellipse so this is the ellipse tilted by 45 degree that's what this is okay so the that's the end of uh, that's the end of an analytic uh, geometry for high school and I hope you enjoyed this video I'll see you in the next video